This podcast is sponsored by Relevant, a location-based mobile network personalized by your interests. Customize your news feed to consolidate all the information you care about all in one place to quickly and easily find what's relevant to you. Find out what's going on in your local area and reach your community from the palm of your hand. Relevant is available on iOS and coming soon to Android. Be the first to know with Relevant. What's up, everybody? It's the Poorly Edited Podcast, the show where we bring on the most creative minds that we can find, as well as a bunch of college kids can. Not very well. Not, not very well at all. My name's Amrest Farrow. We've got Pat Lilly and Chandler Davis in the studio. How are you guys doing? I'm fantastic. Yeah, we've got That's Lizzie great. Cates on camera. I don't know if you guys noticed, but... I'm not in Kansas anymore, guys. That's true. We're not really in Kansas anymore. We're in Kansas. We're in New York City. We're in New York City. We're in New York City. It's a two-hour drive this morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're 23 floors up. 23? Yeah. We're on the the 23rd floor right now. We walked up. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) We walked up 23 floors to get to our beautiful guest today, <gasps> Marsha Dietland Bennett. Hi, everybody. How you doing, Marsha? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for coming all the way to New York. Thanks for letting us <laughs> come all the way to New York and giving us a reason to do that. Yeah. Are you going to stay and like play around yeah, absolutely. the city? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. Take it me. Though it's 10 hours free. of parking or something. <laughs> yeah. so. We got 10 hours of parking. It's for good. I got a good. bunch of passive hand warmers. Good. Yeah. He was about to, this is... He was about to come to the city without gloves. Yeah, no, yeah. not a good idea. Thank you. I'm not a New Yorker. This is like frostbite weather. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to be a tough guy. You know? yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. my image. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no one is tough in New York. I swear. Like I have friends. <laughs> I have friends who come here and and they try to be fashionable in the winter, mm. and within a month of being here in the winter. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. in like the biggest. I call it my sleeping bag. I wear a sleeping bag. I wear like a, <laughs> now it's like ridiculous because you just can't look good. Yeah. In the they try and to nobody car- does. Yeah. They try to carry a bad shot, but that's they not going to happen. Yeah, it's true. That's, that's not. Freeze. They that's freeze not their happen. off. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got Marsha Dietlin Bennett here with us. You guys might know her from Newlyweds, Return of the Living Dead 2, which was your first film, first song, yeah. Getting Grace, which I think by now all of our viewers and <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're just, she's the, the last stop on the Getting That's Grace right. train that we've had here. The, the, tour. The, the tour. The tour. The Getting Grace right? tour. The first time we've actually gone so anywhere with the tour. tour. Yeah. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Daniel Roebuck, who's been absolutely amazing yeah. in that. Uh, Yes. And working with him, he's incredible. We've got a lot more things coming up with him. So, Daniel. It's also, somehow love everyone you. we've talked to is also in love with Daniel Roebuck. Yeah. I think which there's a trend there. I figured they'd be he's like, I figured somebody lovable. would be slighted by him. Everyone but just it's not. to know him. Everyone he, somehow yeah. knows Daniel Roebuck. No, they yeah. do. I mean, and if they don't know him, they they think they know him. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But Dan is the guy. Like you go into a restaurant. Have you ever eaten out with Dan? Like gone to a restaurant? And, not yet. And, we okay. haven't had a meal. Yeah. Yeah. No. So the the server will come over to the table and he's like, "Hi, I'm Dan," and he gets their name and because he always he doesn't eat anything green. Like he's doing a press has, tour. Yeah, exactly. he's like, "Hi, I'm Dan." But that's genuinely him, mm. and he remembers those people's names, and he know like everywhere you go with Dan, he knows everybody who works there, and that's like really by sweet. first name and stuff like that. Yeah. He's a very genuine human being. He's, he's Not just that I'm here from Hollywood, but you know he's yeah. very he's very lovely and has some great you know like honest self-deprecating humor about yeah. himself yeah. and and that's really wonderful very passionate about hot dogs yeah very passionate about <laughs> yeah those ones with that cheese in the middle shout oh out to pots peeps and yakos which one <coughs> I, okay i can't pat would you like to ask My, sure i guess do you, do you have a preferred hot dog from lehigh valley i think it's pots is the one with wow. the cheese in the middle oh, right? that's the first one i'm a pots one yeah. i like that pots one. gotten any answer from anyone <gasps> no, no one will because you know what? Because I'm not from there, I can yeah, get away yeah. with it. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah, you can escape. Yeah. The, There's the, something the magical fallback. about that little wedge of like Velveeta cheese that's mm-hmm. going through that dog. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Did they they were so up? good on the set. Like they would bring them by and just give them to the crew. Oh, and, that's, and, that's and you so know, cool. when you're working, I remember like shooting the last scene in hospice, and you're literally in that hospice room mm-hmm. for like 14 hours, right? Mm-hmm. And that I just remember hard. the the dogs coming in at like <laughs> one in the morning. And it was the best thing you'd ever taste. So that's really is is true because in that scene in the movie, 
I think right. Jenny, Jenny, Jenny says to Gracie, "Like, mm-hmm. what other place would ever bring you bring someone exactly. hot dogs in the middle of the night?" So you were really filming that in the middle of the night, getting those hot we dogs. We were. In the of the night. <laughs> like, yeah. That was that was a real thing. Yeah. yeah. Did you tally it up how many you had? No. Well, I don't eat a lot of meat, so I was kind of you know yeah. I was kind of off uh, my diet when I was there because <laughs> you, you gotta eat all that good stuff. Yeah. I know. I'm from Ohio. Like I know you have to eat like the really good bad food when mm-hmm. you go there. Yeah. Um, but I probably had like four or five of them, I would say. Okay. And I like Pete's too. Pete's is good mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Madeline said that she was done for the rest of her life. Because she had to eat a ton of yeah. hot dogs. She yeah. said she was completely done. She yeah. said, thank you, but I'm completely done. She hadn't really learned the thing like when you're filming a movie because you do take after take after take after yeah. take. And she was eating it take after yeah. take after take. And then she, I think she finally, like, I was like, Maddie, you know, some people you can get like a spit thing and you can <laughs> yeah. sort of chew it and spit it out if you That's don't so want funny. to eat it. Like, we, but I think she ate so many of those mm-hmm. hot dogs. We, uh, I wrote a short that we filmed and made one day release. But uh, in it, yeah. yeah. What's it called? <laughs> um, in it, we have, Look in for that part of like the first, yeah. <laughs> the first shot's Chandler eating cereal out of a bowl, and we shot it at my house. So I'm like, okay, I'll just make cereal. I put milk in it, and I walk out, and he's like, oh, this is good for the first take, but by like the tenth take, it's yeah. gonna be really soggy and disgusting. <laughs> disgusting, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So like you don't actually have to. Eat it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you're doing this, and you've known Daniel for quite a while. Yeah. Since you were 19 I, years old, you yeah, said? Yeah, I met Dan when I was, ni- we've known each other since I was 19, and he's a little older than me. <laughs> Did you meet him? <laughs> Ooh, so some shade. I think he was like 21 or 2, maybe, when I you, met him. You were on Matlock. <clears throat> I was on that. Did him. you meet him? No, there? this is even before that. Oh, before this that. is years before that. Wow. So I met Dan. Um, my first husband, Tim, his family owns a community theater in Los Angeles. And uh, I was out there very young. And Dan auditioned for a play at the theater uh, called No Time for Sergeants, which was a movie that Andy Griffith did. Okay. Periodically. Yes. And. Um, I remember sitting in the room, I was just sort of watching the callbacks, and there it was really between Dan and this other guy who was doing like a total Andy Griffith impersonation. And everyone in the room wanted to cast that guy, because they're like, oh, he sounds just like Andy. And I was like, no, you should cast the guy who can act. Mm-hmm. Not the guy who can just act like Andy his own. And they actually listened to me, which my oh, ex-father-in-law really? never listen to anything I said, but, which is why he's an ex-father-in-law, <laughs> um, partly. But, uh, so it wasn't even anything to do with your marriage, it was just like, oh, your father. Well, yeah, gotta, ex-father, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, split. no, it really was, it actually really was. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Hope he's not listening right now. They, they live on like a ranch in southern Utah, I doubt they so. Don't they don't get any internet, 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 internet out there. there. <laughs> We're not friends on Facebook or anything. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so they, listen, they cast Dan. Wow. And and he Listen. was amazing, and we just truly became like yeah best friends. So you give Dan his big break. Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say while he was doing that play, I think he got River's Edge, the first movie. Or he had already done Cave Girl. Oh, sorry, no, he had oh, already Girl. done that brilliant Cave movie. That's a classic. <laughs> oh, I love Cave Girl. I have a Cave sign. Girl. I have a sign. Cave, Cave Girl, Girl is just. <laughs> Cave Girl, I think, is better now watching it now awesome. than it would have been at that time. It's yeah. Just, yeah, it's it's. You just, have all seen it. It's like fine wine. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh yeah. It's uh, it's, it's kind of fat. I mean, Dan's hilarious in it and adorable. He is, and, and him so with that with that woman just playing I off know, of her, and just like the I think the the sexual tension, the, the him being like this. This, nerd. this 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 very weird nerd mm-hmm. trying to get her to be like booze and she's like no like, <laughs> and hits him in the face like that whole thing was I know. absolutely it's really wonderful great. so how many things is this your first time working with him and acting um, with him well we did matlock together but but when we did matlock it was really great because he was they were doing it and they were filming in wilmington then the show had moved to the east coast and uh I was on like two episodes. It was like a two-parter kind of thing, mm-hmm. and I was so excited because I got to go and be with Dan. And I remember it was Christmas time, and I was like there in Wilmington with Dan and that whole fabulous crew and everything. Um, but the funny thing was, we had one scene together, and we had where we had like one line together, 
and on the whole like two hours of it. So so yeah, I was on Matlock with him, but we really didn't have anything to do with each other. other. I think there's one scene where I'm sitting behind him in the courtroom, you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. And then there's one other scene they added and um but yeah, so we didn't really get to act together really on that, but we had a great time, you know, behind the scenes. Mm. Um, so now you've known him for about five years because you said you met when you were 19. Yeah, only five years. Yeah. He's much older than I am. <laughs> 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 so you're working together for Getting Grace, and he knew he wanted you for that, for that yeah. part to play Venus. And he, he said he catered that to your strengths. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, when we first got the show, it was funny because... I first heard about the script. It was called Bending Spoons. You probably guess it. Yes, probably been through this. Um, but I actually first heard about the script because I was shooting uh, the Fitzgerald Family Christmas, which I, is another movie yes. I've done with my birds. Yeah. And um, this guy Brian Darcy James, who's this big Broadway theater actor here in New York, um, came on to play my husband. I, he's a friend of mine, so I had recommended him to Eddie. And, and so Brian is from Saginaw, Michigan. And originally the script, the guy who wrote the script is from Saginaw, Michigan. So this was going to take place in Michigan. And Brian was somehow attached to it, maybe to play Ron, or I'm not sure who he was going to play. And then I remember we were talking about it. And then I came home, and like a week later, Dan called me. And he said, hey, I have this script. And I was like, wait a minute, I just heard about that script <laughs> from Brian Darcy James. Really? And he's like, oh, my God. Yeah, so so I it came to me like sort of both ways. Um, but at that point, Dan, I think, was going to maybe co-direct. I wasn't sure where he was in it, but he was going to play Bill. And he's like, you have to play Venus. He's like, you have to play this part. And he basically sold me to the producers at the time. Um, some of them remained eventually, because, you know, this was like a nine-year process. A very right? long time. It took a long time to get the money um, and get sort of everything lined up. So uh, I think I sent my reel, and he's like, you're in. They want you to play Venus and all that. And then it all changed. And then, you know, even right down to the wire, he's like, well, if you don't play Venus, you can play my sister, you know? And I was like, no, I had to be Venus. <laughs> so when he got sort of control of it, then it, then it really worked out. And Venus was such an instrumental part of the movie. And that, that whole, I mean, she, she is, she's kind of how Bill got his whole evolution as a character right. and how it kind of came to an end and what with his past and everything like that. So your character has an addiction to pills and alcoholism and all of those different types of things and how did you prepare for that knowing going in that you were going to play something like that that might not be to your actual oh, no, normal I, character. Oh no, I drink a lot so <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> well, I'll do what we need to do can You can ask the crew. I was like the bourbon supplier at the, at the UN. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, party in the lobby! <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I don't do pills though. <laughs> so, um, Sam, it's going to have a lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to have boundaries somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I had actually a former boyfriend of mine, I won't name him, uh, got sober like a month after we started dating, so um, and we were together for about three years, and I went to a lot of like AA meetings and al meetings and stuff like that, so I was kind of uh, familiar with the world, I guess, really. And um, But you know, ultimately you just, you just go into it, right? You can't, yeah. I, I didn't actually prepare much for this film because it was too hard. It was mm -hmm. too yeah. painful. I was like, I can't go there. Yeah, so you, if you really get into that character, it'd probably be hard. I just hard. couldn't. Yeah. I, I couldn't learn. I mean, it's so funny. Like, I get on, you know, Maddie Dundon is like, I have the whole script memorized. And I'm like, really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> she, but Madeline is remember. amazing. And she's, she's a go-getter. Like, and it was her first movie. She yeah. didn't know. Yeah. I think she learned, you know, um, she's like, Don't you, you know, do you know your lines? And I'm like, no. Because on a set, you know, on a film set, you may be, I mean, this is a low budget film, so you may be, you're shooting 10 pages a day, which is a lot for a movie. Uh, on a big budget movie, you'll shoot like two pages a day sometimes, you know? So it's not like you have a lot of lines. I, I learn them like the day before I have to go and do them on yeah. set, unless you have like big speeches or something like that, and, and that's rare. And every actor and actress does things differently. Like exactly. Some people, they need to know their lines way ahead well, of time. Well, she's used to doing theater, where you do. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. And you memorize the whole thing. Um, so I think she, which was great. She was super prepared. She knew my lines. She knew her lines. My, I'd be like, what's my line, Maddie? She was going to say, blah, blah, blah. You know, like that. She gave an amazing performance. Oh, my. She's, she's, she's incredible. She's spectacular. She's yeah. spectacular. I was, I couldn't believe it was her first movie. I mean, Dan and I joke about it. He's like, yeah, my first movie was Cape Girl. Marsha's was Richard Living Dead, part 
to. He's like, and Maddie gets getting grace, you know? It's like so much of a better movie, I think, than you, those you, other two classes. Yeah, class. You seem to have, like, in, in real life, mentored Madeline. Oh, well, I, she's, yeah, she's, I mean, she's like, she's like my kid, you know? Yeah. You, I fell in love with her as soon as I met her, and we went through such an intense... Mm -hmm process on the film, you know, we, Such an we text time. each other, like, if, there, if there's an event, I'm like, what are you wearing, <laughs> what, are you what are you wearing, you know, something like that, but I yeah. am like a, I think, I like to think I'm like a circus, I mean, she wished me happy Mother's Day, okay. on Mother's Day. I think Day. you're in that, oh. I think yeah, that's the yeah. yeah. Yes. I think you made it. I think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you feel that, that working in that kind of character, the mother-daughter relationship, is basically the same as other things that you've done, or do you feel that you learned something and picked up on new things with raising your own daughter? I mean, you have a daughter at that exact same age. Right. You guys are very close, just like, uh, just like Grace and Venus were. Mm -hmm. So, was there anything that like helped you there before yeah. or after filming that? Well, definitely. I mean, I think part of the reason I couldn't work on the work on it in advance is just because. You, can't imagine that your daughter's gonna be sick and dying and so having a daughter around the same age um, it kind of kept me from being able to like even mm -hmm. think about it mm -hmm. until I was in that room and had to face it but it certainly tapped into that intense loss that you would feel if you lost one of your children you know one of your kids as far as acting goes I mean it seems like you you pull a lot from your experience you know that you've lived through in the world or that you're currently experiencing that that kind of manifests itself in the character that you're playing at the time yeah, yeah. so do, do you think that that's a heavy do you think that's heavier that contributes to how that character turns out on screen than any like prep you do on purpose for that character leading up to it i do think so. i mean i think well for me i feel like acting is is um you can prep or whatever. I mean, the kind of prep I do is like, who is Venus? Mm -hmm. What is, how does she dress? You know, I do sort of like inside out say like, what was her job? What was her dating mm -hmm. life? Who's the dad? You know, I do all that stuff it just in my head because you don't see any of that in the movie. But I think it creates sort of layers before you go in, right? Mm -hmm. But then ultimately, you just have to be there in that scene. You just have to be present and and if you're really in what is going on in that mm -hmm. scene then all that other stuff just goes away because it's just about like those moments and I do think things that happen in your life like my mom had just passed away like three months before we started filming and we were in hospice with her for like two and a half weeks and um, that was really present like mm -hmm. that stuff was really still uh, fresh and raw and in so walking into that hot we were shooting in a real hospital yeah. walking in there was um, brought back a lot of stuff but it made it all very accessible mm -hmm. you know and Dan knew my mom too like he was really close to my mom so it was very sweet I remember it was her birthday one day we were shooting it would have been her 76th birthday and he like stopped and they said a prayer for her on the set wow. and it was really really lovely um, you said that you felt like she was with you. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, she knew we were going to be making the movie, and she was so excited that we were finally going to get to do the movie. Yeah. And she, I wish we had gotten it done before she passed, because I think... Um, but she's seen it. I, she's proud. I think so. I mean, yeah. I feel... You know, it's funny. I was... Um, when we opened the film, I, I went to Springfield, to my yes. old hometown, where I worked at, like, the local movie theater in high mm -hmm. school. And I opened the movie there. And I hadn't done that since Return of the Living Dead Part 2. So it's been like 30 years, right? Um, still the same owners of the little tiny yeah. theater chain. I think they actually just sold the theaters. Uh, but um, I was sitting there with my sister, who was like sobbing through the whole thing, like telling me how much she hated me because I made her see it. <laughs> you know? She's like, I can't handle this. And her daughter, my niece, who's a mom now, and my niece wasn't crying at all. She was just like, stoic and watching it and laughing and the, and the movie ended and the credits are rolling and she looks at me and she goes Graham should be here and she just oh. like burst and she goes she should be sitting next to me and she just lost it you know so I do feel like my mom is is aware and I feel like she kind of helped 
helped the whole production happen yeah. the way that it did. I feel like she was a part of it. Maybe energy. helped you get through some of those scenes that were really tough. Yeah, yeah, I think really so. Tough. Yeah. Though, those scenes, I just, yeah, I, I think Daniel brings up the fact that you feel, you almost feel guilty about laughing in it because it's a sad movie. You also feel guilty about being sad because it's such a funny movie as well. Right. And But you're allowed, the point is that you're allowed to have both of those emotions because in real life you have both of those different types of emotions. Right. And uh, I, I laughed so hard and then <laughs> I was with a, a friend of mine when we saw the movie and he just... We, I was bawling my eyes out. Aww. He was sitting there like very, Aww. and then the movie like ends, and I was like, "What do you think?" And he was like, <laughs> "He was like, <laughs> I know." He's like, "This movie, he was like, this movie sucks." And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, what do you think of the movie?" He's like, "It's so good." <laughs> he was he was uh, crying so much because you guys all gave the most amazing performances. Mm, and okay, so so you had just said that you went to Springfield High School, yes, right. Springfield so, North High School. Well, then there was a North and a South. North then. Now it's just one. Now it's so before you went, you were just talking about doing the screening there. Before you went, did that? You promoted it on Twitter and you tweeted to John Legend. Yes, who's from Springfield, Ohio, as well. Yeah, he was from my hometown. From your sure. hometown. He's from my hometown. He went to school with my brother David. My really? younger brother. Yeah. And yeah. you tweeted him. Yeah. And asked him to retweet that, and he did. Did he? I never yeah. saw he retweeted it. Yeah, you thanked him for it. Oh. You said thank you. Oh. <laughs> no, you're not. Right. Oh, my God. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. That's so, so nice. So, so you I'm said, so lame on Twitter. I'm the lamest on Twitter. So you said to him, you were like, thank you so much. He, you were like, uh, John, will you please retweet this for your fellow Springfield yeah. Uh, you know, participant in school, and you said that you guys had the same music teacher. Uh, acting teacher. Acting mm-hmm. teacher. You sure. tweeted that, and then he retweeted it, oh, and then awesome. you, you said thank you. Awesome. <laughs> you remember that. I was like, wow, John Legend retweeted about Getting Grace. And I don't even Grace. remember it. <laughs> yeah, John, maybe John Legend has seen Getting Grace. Uh, maybe he's seen the movie. Maybe, maybe he has a copy. It's available have. at Walmart. You so. know, there's this, there's this video that he has, you guys can probably find online, it's, it's a thing promoting teachers, right? Mm-hmm. And that acting teacher is sitting there with him in it. Mrs. Bodie is her, oh. Linda Bodie is her name. And um, she was my high school drama teacher. I, I had two. I had Mr. Peter Westerhoff was like my one year, and then the next year, my senior year, Linda came. And she was John's uh, acting teacher, and she's fantastic. We're still friends. I, I'm still in touch with her. She's, she came to the movie, not when I was there. She was out of town, but she went and saw it. Um, but he actually thanks her for being like such a great teacher. And they're sitting together in this video. And so that's why I was like, oh, okay, he knows Bodie. They're still buddies, you know. He does. He's done so much for Springfield. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but the South High School, um, they kind of combined the high schools into one big high school. They tore down North High School, tore down our beautiful auditorium, and did not build a new one. Where you know I did the musicals and the plays and everything, and um, now they have like a cafeteria slash stage, which stinks. The South High is a is in a historic building, and the auditorium was gorgeous. And John Legend actually gave them like five hundred thousand dollars to redo the theater in in South High School, and like they the school has been re- refurbished, and now I think it's like a STEM school, and then but they've redone the whole auditorium, and they reopened it I think last year or something like that. So he's he's really done a lot for the community because Springfield is one of those towns like Bethlehem, you know, where the industry left. We had we had International Harvester, the trucking industry, and left. And so it's a it's, 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 there's a college there too, so that helps them with just a lot like Bethlehem. But so there's a lot of financial problems, you know, in, in parts of Springfield, and the opioid crisis is really intense there and everything. So he's really done a lot for the arts community there, which I think is really cool. So just you're a lot like Daniel in the way that <laughs> your hometown yeah. means a lot to you. Yeah. And and giving back to that and shining light on that really means a lot to you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when he was like, where should, he goes, where can you go to open the movie where people will want to see it? And I was like, oh, we have to do it in Springfield, you know. So I called Phil Chackers, who ran the theaters, and I was like, can we screen my movie there? And he was like, absolutely, that would be so great. And, you know, a lot of people came. It was really fun. I saw people from elementary school that I hadn't seen since elementary school and it was really really cool. Did you have any of those moments where we all think to ourselves where someone might have 
not thought enough of you or put you down or something like that and then you come back as a <laughs> as a famous actress to your hometown <laughs> screening your new movie and you're like oh yeah, I am. <laughs> maybe a little <laughs> no, no. um not not so much actually <laughs> the people that i really love the in, in the people i i moved high school so my first two years i was in sydney ohio where i where i grew up and then i moved to springfield as a junior in high school, but I still have like a group of friends there that I see every time I go home. We have girls' nights out. My my best friend Dan. We have he's my other de- best friend Dan. He's like, I like I like guys named Dan. Like what could they say? Um, he worked at the movie theater with me, you know. Uh, so we go out. Like I just I'm very connected to the community still. So I don't I don't feel like in the Springfield world. But I have a funny story that's kind of off topic. Go that's for kind it. of a fun story. No, we only it. like things that are yes. off topic. Yeah. So like, so, okay, this is awesome. So when I was like seventeen, um, and working at that movie theater, uh, Rob Lowe, the famous Rob Lowe, uh, is from his grandparents were from Sydney, Ohio, where I grew up. And I'm working at the theater, and he was gonna come, and the movie Class had just come out, so it was like I think after yes. Outsiders. I remember, remember that, that movie that Class, a, right? That's a good movie. Where his like mom is hot, Jacqueline Pisse, and yeah. then, like his friend sleeps with her or something like that, right? <laughs> so um, he was coming, and the mayor was gonna give him a key to the city, and they were screening the movie Class, and I was like, well, you know. When, when movie stars come, they always have, like, an escort or something. You know, they have, like, the girls walk them down. And and I think it was Phil. Something was like, well, Marsha, would you want to do that? And I'm like, sure, no problem. I haven't even thought about it. Well, sure, I'd be happy to. And then I got my friend Susan, and she's like, okay. And so he had two escorts. So anyway, oh. that night, Rob and I had a nice little... His brother Chad was like, my, my brother likes you. And I was like, oh, really? And so we went and we were like, started making out and stuff. I could have lost my virginity to him, but I didn't. I did not. Did not. I chose not to. Is this wow. getting too graphic no. for your podcast? No, it's just. Isn't this it's a great hilarious. story? Like, I, I, know. I don't know if I would have done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> See, right? Then hindsight, I wish I had. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't. But the best part of the night was I walked into a bar and there were all the like bitchy cheerleaders that weren't very nice at that school. And uh, one of them, we're now friends now, so she is actually really sweet now. She's super supportive of the movie. But um, she had stolen my first boyfriend. <laughs> and who do I walk into the bar with? Problem on my arm. <laughs> well, that was kind of a good story, right? It's a fantastic. <laughs> story. I don't, I don't even know how I'm going to continue after that. It's okay. Because I'm just like, it's like, you hooked up with Rob. Yeah. Like, wow. Can I ask? Mm. Are we allowed to? Was he a good kisser? So beautiful. So beautiful. Was he? Was he a decent person? So sweet. Really, really sweet. See I mean, he like... knew that no meant no. <laughs> he knows that. <laughs> you know, Rob knows. He that knows no, that no yeah. means no. Um, <laughs> he was lovely. He was so sweet, and I was just like, oh my god! And, you know, yeah. it was like the greatest thing ever. And I told him I wanted to be an actress and everything. And I, I wish that I could run into him yeah. at some point. You know, I've been like, like two degrees away. Once. Yeah. So he got the key to the city, but not the key to your city. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> He might be watching this podcast. Rob, right now. if you're if there. Rob will watch his our podcast. <laughs> we're on a different we're on a different level right here. Wow. Thank you so much for sure. I need a minute. <laughs> I need, I, need a minute. The, I know. I look my, I was I was sharing this with my daughter because she is upset. She's a kid now. This with your daughter. Yes, because I was like, Yes, we made out, but that was it. You know, that's good to share with your daughter, right? Even How does your husband feel about that story? He's fine with it. He's your husband's okay. fine. Is yeah, he, he, he didn't is know was, me. <laughs> was your husband like, why didn't you go for it? No, no, no. He's Did you not. ever speak to him after that? No, I've never seen him again. You never saw him again. Never he saw him so again. you didn't get his just number or anything like that. No, <laughs> no. Well, people didn't have numbers then, right? They were, <laughs> they were they weren't cell yeah. phones. There was just the carrier that's, that's picture. Like, hey, that's like, hey, here's my parents' phone. The hilarious <laughs> thing is, there was like a picture of us from the newspaper, and um, it might be on Facebook. If you want to look on Facebook, you might find it. There's a someone snapped a picture of us, and it refers to me as Marsha Bradley, which is my maiden name. His escort. <laughs> you know, so, his and then it gives like the address of his grandparents where they live. What? Were. what? Yeah, what? Can you imagine in the paper? Like this is in the eighties, right? You know, can you imagine like yeah, it says he, he's the grandson of blah 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 who live at blah blah blah. What? 
And you know, nobody's there tearing down his house or anything. It's so oh, that's yeah. what we can lose. Until yeah, until this podcast <laughs> comes out. Uh, that's that's so much different than than what the paparazzi would do today, though. Like, if something like if that would come out, like people would get absolutely hounded and things like that. Wow. Show them what do you have to say after that. Uh, Speaking actually, of big time <laughs> show business, <Yes. laughs> we're actually filming at uh, your husband's offices right now. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. This, which is really cool. And beautiful explains venue. Silent yeah, Crow. It's very. We just like get what, some of this. Like, what is like all this cool this stuff? These are all the He's a he's a um, documentary television producer. Uh, he has a show called Barnwood Builders, which is hugely successful on DIY Network. It's like their number one show. Mm. And it's about these like West Virginia guys who tear down old barns and build like beautiful structures and stuff like that. But these are all shows they're working on, pitching. And it's like a beautiful firework. mind kind of thing. <laughs> that is, yeah. That's yeah. my husband. Um, he always has a lot of shows that are sort of works in progress. Um, Should we like blur any of this out? I'm very fond of <laughs> so yeah. whiskey. Yeah, blur. Oh, <laughs> I, like whiskey. I, like I think there's some one. whiskey on the side of the room there. That is very special whiskey. These are, uh, I don't, I can't say what it's about because you know, you don't want to get it out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Someone steals yeah. the idea yeah. and then yeah. runs yeah. it. That's understandable. So your husband, Matt Bennett. Matt Bennett. Matt Bennett. You guys have, so the Silent Crows Arts. Silent Crow here, Arts, yeah. Silent Crow Arts here in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, she was giving us a tour of the offices. Absolutely lovely office. So much culture in here and, yeah, and a lot fun. of character. Yeah. Um, and Everybody's so nice. They are nice. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. That's a rule for him. And they're all busy, dude. Isn't it on the, the website bothering somewhere? Them? Yeah. What's that? I think it's on the website somewhere where it's like, you these have to people nice. who work here, you have to be nice. Or I think it's yeah. true. Nice. It says nice and You know, he hi caps. he's really... A lot of like Sean McCourt is his, has been his best friend for years. It's like if Dan and I were to go into a company together, yeah. kind of a thing. Um, he hires his friends and and people who work here worked here for a long time. They're great. We're it's kind of crew. we're kind of the same way, and we have our crew. Our crew is our crew is seven people wow. of, of our com our company is seven people, and we are all. We're all like, best friends. We are, we are all very close. <laughs> um, we all respect each other very much. We work together constantly, and we we all they all stayed at my house last night. We all stayed together, had a sleepover, and we're oh, done. <laughs> we have a sleepover, got our jammies. Um, but we'll we'll go like all day long together, like hanging out, and then we'll just spend all night long working. Like that's we just awesome. we spend a lot of time. Did you guys go to school? All go to school together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I think that's the downfall of working with your friends is that work can never end sometimes because yes. yeah. you're all also you're always, co-workers yeah. but you hang yeah. out so it's we like, also didn't realize that we're we're kind of we're workaholics so we yeah. didn't realize that other people don't work like we do like they'll go out they'll hang out with their friends and they're just hanging out with their friends and we find it fun to like go out to a restaurant and laugh, have heated debates and, and we have heated debates and we will just like what will be at a restaurant and they're like, well, let's whip out our laptop and start writing this yeah. up. And everyone's like, I thought we were going out for other people with us. Like, I thought we were going out for a nice dinner. Like, yeah, this is this is a nice dinner for us. That's a problem. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's really no. I think yeah. it's awesome actually. Um, where where did you go to school? Lehigh Carbon Community College, very yes. small school. Very uh -huh. small school. So when you meet cool people at a small school, you're like, we gotta stick you together. You gotta stick together. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. smart. I think that's really smart. And you were all in like the media, yeah, media yeah. communications, mm -hmm. TV, and film. Awesome. So we're all working in, in that kind of same sector and started the podcast. Then it turned into a media production company. So and now it turned yeah. into wasting your time. So we do, we do videography, photography. We have a it's label fantastic. as well communications and media and I said we're working with Daniel on some of his next projects so yeah. that's very I'm exciting. in that too Really? Are you gonna be what? Yeah. Oh, we will get you one together. Too. I'm in that too. Yeah. I play Diane, but we'll, he doesn't we'll even another, know who Diane is. We'll have is. another interview. Yeah. <laughs> you play Diane, but there's no Diane yet. There's no but Diane written, know. which is not a very good song. I think he's like almost done with the script, but he hasn't figured out who I am so, yet. So this, he right? won't let me yeah. play the nun. I want to play the nun, but he won't let me. I don't know if you were. I you could what? play a nun. There's, I'm known from the moment in Getting Grace where Grace is like. Your cleavage, mom, to oh, yeah. pointing <laughs> over to pointing over to I play the nun. Like, yeah, I, I love that. I that's range. Yeah, that's, that's range. That's, that's, right? that's, 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 that's supportive right? acting. Right? I yeah, wanted to true. send him a picture of like he's like you're too pretty. I'm like nuns can be what? pretty. <laughs> No, it's gonna be pretty. I wanted to send him a picture of like Nicole Kidman in that what's that movie Destroyer or whatever she's in right now. And is he like, look, mm -hmm. this is Nicole Kidman, who looks like this. 
I could look worse than that on, <laughs> on a normal day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I could so play. That's, your, that's what you gotta say in auditions. Like, I could work, look worse than Nicole Kidman for you. Like, yes. I could do that yes. for this role. Uh, easily. Not everybody's willing to do that. Not everyone's willing to look worse than Nicole. She's a very talented, beautiful person. I don't. She's it's amazing. not easy to look better than her. No, no one no. could look better I'll than her. I mean, you saw her in Moulin Rouge. <laughs> oh. was this goddess. She's a goddess. She's an yeah. incredible, absolutely incredible goddess. She's a goddess. So I want to talk to you about not only do you know Daniel Roebuck, who's been a friend of yours forever, but you were in Return of the Living Dead, <laughs> those part two, yeah. part two iconic movie and so many like different horror social media horror accounts love to talk about that film yeah. it's just so crazy it doesn't get a lot of good publicity i don't think over the top those are sometimes <laughs> the, love it. No, the best love it. watches yeah. What's that? those are sometimes the best kind of movies i think so i mean some people love it some people love the cheese of it the mm-hmm. 80s cheese yeah. of it the diehard living dead fans don't like it yeah. because it was sort of Return of the Living Dead was so edgy, and yeah. then part two was sort of silly and mm. comic. But I, I think it kind of, it, it was like the first one Fun. that was comic, really. I mean, Night yeah. of the Living Dead is funny just to watch it, because it's yeah. like naked now it people. Is, yeah. yeah, it's funny yeah. now. But it wasn't meant to be funny. Mm-hmm. And this was like meant to be funny. And, yeah. and I think people appreciate that a little more now, maybe. I don't know. You know who's in that movie with me? Dana Ashbrook. <laughs> I was about to bring that up. Dana, Dana Ashbrook, Ashbrook. Who is... Such a handsome guy, by Isn't the way. I'm not, I'm not trying to discredit all of his talents, but so cute. He's so cute. I so love cute. Dana. Yeah. He's like my little brother. He really is. He's lovely. He looks like, I think we were talking, he looks like one of the most interesting human beings. Oh, he's a sweetheart. Is he? Oh my God, yeah. So when we did Living Dead, I think he was 19. I was like 20 or 21. And... Um, you know, we, it was our first movie. We were doing our first film together, so it was so much fun. And you're basically shooting nights for weeks on end, so you're like a you're like a zombie. You know, you're like a, a vampire or whatever. You go to work at five o'clock at night. You come home at you know six o'clock in the morning. Um, but we had so much fun and stayed in touch over the years. Um, and then I moved to New York, and he moved to New York, and we ran into each other like I don't know maybe. Eight years ago or something and uh, we since have and and sort of got each other's numbers and we're like oh my god you live here now kind of a thing and so when Dan was looking actually and, and I ran into like the woman who was the director's assistant on Living Dead mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. like we ran at the playground with our kids <laughs> you know I hadn't seen her in wow. like 20 years or whatever um, so, and Ken Wiederhorn, who directed it, also lives here in New York now. They say that New York City is just, like, the smallest town ever. No, it's true. Like, I mean, literally, to everyone. I know, it was yeah. crazy. Linda's like, I'm going to freak you out. I'm like, I know you. <laughs> you know, it's the weirdest thing. Uh, so the four of us get together occasionally and have dinner and nice. laugh about that, that stuff. Um, but anyway, when Dan was looking for Ron, the character of Ron, I was like, well, you know, Dana is on this coast dates in New York so he really wanted to cast out in New York so he didn't have to fly people back and forth yeah. mm-hmm. um, and so he was like yeah but I don't know if Dana's right for it and you know he just was on the fence about it so I was like okay and I suggested to this other guy my friend Chris and, or, uh, and he couldn't do it he was doing a play and I kept coming my cousin Will Swenson who's like a Broadway guy mm-hmm. yes, yeah, yeah. Like Will, he was doing something up in like Massachusetts and I kept coming back to Dana, and finally he was like, okay, fine, have him send me a tape. <laughs> so Dana sent the tape, and Dan was like, oh, Dana's tape was very, very good. <laughs> you know, kind of a thing, you know? And I was like, like no, told y'all. No, I told you. Like, talent? Told we don't you. get that around here. Um, and he ended up getting it. He ended up getting it, and it made me so happy. Because mm. it was like the first time we'd worked together since Living Dead. Got the band back together. It again. was the band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he hasn't he aged so well, Dana Ashbrook. He, he has. You, right? Because yeah. I just was Googling him in preparation for the show, and I was like, he hasn't looked any different. <laughs> I know. He just yeah. has white hair. <laughs> He's still Twin Peaks. Yeah. Very, I know. <laughs> very young, very good looking. And a, and a talented, charismatic guy. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. fantastic. And that, that he kind of, ju- he je- definitely jumps off the page, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. does. He's very striking, right? He is. He has beautiful eyes, too. Yes, like you do. I mean, your eyes, are, your eyes are gorgeous. Like, 
It's a big thing. <laughs> he has really, and really nice eyes. Yeah. So we talked about... You talk about New York City. Yeah. I've always been, a, you know, a onlooker of New York City from afar, like, wishing, you know? I live yeah. in a very small rural area, so... You know, but I've always wondered, is it is it as exciting to live in New York City as it seems? And you work in show business, so, yeah. like, is is this the place to be? And do you have a lot of fun working in this environment? Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up with, like, the... Uh, in Ohio mm -hmm. with the New York skyline picture poster on my wall and my friend Amy Stamper and I were gonna she's gonna be a nurse and I was gonna be an actress and we were gonna live in New York City together after college well then I went to college for a year left and moved to LA <laughs> with my husband that's how you, you got married it. very young yeah, yeah, well, like yeah. 20 years old I, 18 I do not recommend it <laughs> um, uh, but we were married for like eight years, so that's not so bad at that sure. young age. Uh, so I, I blew the dream, right? And she actually became a nurse practitioner, but she still lives in Ohio. Uh, but then, so I didn't come to New York until I was like 21, I think, for my first time. And from the moment I set foot in New York, you know, you have those places in the world or in your life where you go, this is home. Mm -hmm. Your I, soul just connects to them. I just connected and I loved it so much. Um, but I was living in Los Angeles, which I also enjoyed, but it's a different kind of energy there. And so by the time I started spending, uh, probably years later, by the time when my husband and I split up, um, I was like, well, I'm just going to go to New York for a month and see if I can get any work there, do anything, right? And so I came and I went to like the open call for Les Miserables, was doing the first national tour. And I made it all the way to like the final callbacks for Cosette. Um, which is the one that sings really high, but then I didn't get it, and I was like, oh, bummer, you know, I guess I shouldn't be here. So I went back to <laughs> LA. And so then, wow. um, but then the next time I came here, uh, I came just for a month, and I I got the understudy in an off-Broadway play, which is the first play I did in New York called The Food Chain, which is an amazing play by Nikki Silver. Uh, and I booked like three national commercials, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna move here. <laughs> like, nice. I'm, I'm gonna move here. So I moved here to do the play, and ended up booking a TV pilot there. I mean, I was working more in Los Angeles then, like doing pilots and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I, I like the energy of New York. I've been here now for 20 plus years, and it's an amazing place to live. I mean, we were talking about my daughter who's 16 you raise years old, a, a teenager. You raise a daughter here. Yeah. Which some people, some people frown upon it, and they say, oh, I would never raise a child here. And I say, this is not just, it's a playground, but I can't think of a better place to teach someone teach about life and to have all these museums and all of this art and the culture and the history. I mean, I don't think there's a better place incredible. to raise a child. I agree. I mean, I think both my kids, you know, my son is now 24, but they they grew up, you know, in high school here. And as a, as a teenager, you, you have total freedom. Mm -hmm. Like, your parents don't have to drive you anywhere if you don't drive yet. And yeah. you really have a, an independence at such a young age that most kids don't. Have. I mean, I didn't. Like, I didn't. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to be driven, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and so, and I also feel like there's enough to keep them interested so they don't get into as much trouble, I guess, yeah. if they're not looking for a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot to do. And, you know, the kids go to school together, they hang out after school mm -hmm. together. And then in, in high school in New York, everyone applies to high school. So there's no like neighborhood high school where all the kids go. Mm -hmm. So kids from, like, my daughter's school is 40% international boarding kids, boarding students oh, really? from all over the world. Wow. So she has, like, friends from all over the world, and so then they hang out after school, and then they all go their separate ways because they live in different boroughs, mm -hmm. or they mm -hmm. do, you know, or the boarding kids go to the, you know, the dorms. and That's a privilege that, that we don't have, is getting to choose your education like that. Right. At, at the, right. the K-12 through 12 level. We don't we right. don't have that, right. and also the diversity that you, you get. Yeah, to be exposed you, to all that culture. Yeah, so yeah. awesome. We had absolutely no. We no. grew up absolutely no diversity in our schools at all. I was I was the the diversity for my whole town. It was <laughs> for me. your whole town. It was me. It was Just pretty, you. It was it was wow. Me. It was my school. This is this is this is all you got. It's a lot wow. of pressure. There was a, it was a lot of pressure. Yeah, and they they were like every day they would come up. They would, we have a question. And be like, <laughs> so every day I'd, I'd walk into the school and they'd be like, "What's a swimming pool?" And I'm like, "Oh, okay." Like, <laughs> like okay, like I had to be yeah. so getting to raise a child with that type of like 
diversity, diversity not just like but culturally like international yeah. students yeah it's wonderful fantastic. yeah yeah it's what's great. your favorite what's your favorite place in new york city just to go or do or you can make some enemies with this question <laughs> Oof. um i love i love riverside park i walk my dog in riverside park twice a day um it's so great to have in the mornings before nine o'clock she can run off leash she just run and run through the park and meet all the other dogs and play and everything and it's fantastic uh yeah <laughs> she's a big dog fan oh so. my puppy uh, what times did you say they were <laughs> before nine o'clock that's it before though and then after like nine o'clock we'll just night. extend that's what we're gonna be doing we'll just extend yeah. <laughs> did we'll you bring just... your dog <laughs> No, she's just gonna go oh, pet. Oh, oh, no. oh yeah. I don't have. We work oh, too much. We, we worked. Sometimes she comes and hangs out here. We worked too I much. See, I saw the, you know the bowl Tell under me where his you desk. Live. I'll go get the dog. I'll bring the dog here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I absolutely love animals so much. Oh. Um, but, but so you are just. I'm just I, I don't know. I lost amazing. Like, the, yeah, amazing. Dog, dog. Amazing, Thank fantastic. Um, I love the parks. I love Central Park. When people come, uh, I like to show them, like, Chinatown I love. Mm. Um, I love the Met Museum. I love MoMA. MoMA is kind of more doable, like, if you only have like, a couple of hours, mm -hmm. and you can sort of just go through their standard collection, and it's fantastic. Um, what else do I like to go? I like, if you're down here, you guys should check out Stone Street if you want to go have like a drink or something, unless you're driving. Uh, <laughs> Some one of us here will be, one will be driving. One of us here is also under 21, though. So oh, works, yeah, so. so maybe that one can drive. <laughs> yes. How about a good place? I'm a huge foodie myself. Mm -hmm. Food, yeah. So food is probably the We didn't eat breakfast. We skipped breakfast. Oh, we skipped breakfast. I had a banana breakfast. nut muffin. I bought it at Walmart yesterday. A banana nut muffin from Walmart. <laughs> there is a Shake Shack very close by here. Maybe something not so... <laughs> Not so like standard. So and, no, oh. that's 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 a very normal. Thing. Everyone Lord. everyone knows where <laughs> Shake Shack. Maybe so they're like, I personally eat everything, so I want to get them to go eat like Ethiopian food and Indian yeah. food and all those different yeah. things. They don't want to do that. Don't do, that. Yeah. do you like Chinese food? Though? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah. So you're not far from Chinatown. I mean, you just go up and you could go to Chinatown. Yeah, I would go to Chinatown. Yeah. There, I like there's a vegetarian dim sum place that I love, but you guys might want food, meat. So, I do, I'm a fan yeah. of that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you could go check out Chinatown. Um, we'll spend the last 10 minutes figuring out what we're going to eat after this. Or <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> getting, getting off of the eating topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did want to ask you so you have been in several films like uh, Newlyweds and The Fitzgerald mm -hmm. Family. So, what is your professional relationship with Ed Burns? With Eddie? Oh. Ed Burns, if, and if you guys don't know who he is, he's, he's been amazing. in movies like 27 Dresses and Saving Private Ryan. Uh, yeah. Newlyweds, very but handsome, very talented handsome. gentleman. Yeah. Very. Saving Private Ryan is one of my favorite movies. Oh, yeah. he's so, it's yeah, such yeah. a great film. It's such a great, um, so Eddie, uh, so we have, it's very fun, so, I'll tell one story and then I'll back I'll backtrack because it's kind of a sweet. I, no, I never made out with him. <laughs> I promise. Um, uh, he's freaking married to Christy Turlington, like the most beautiful woman. I didn't in the know. World. That. Yeah, he's married to Christy Turlington. <laughs> yes, yeah. who is also as gorgeous and lovely as Have you he met her? is. Yeah, she's amazing. She's me. In fact, it's funny. And a huge humanitarian as well. Not just no, beautiful, she is but she's a great humanitarian. Yeah, she has yeah. a she has a whole foundation called Every Mother Counts, yeah. where she goes around the world basically and 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 uh, earns money so women don't die in childbirth. Wow. Um, she's spectacular. She's lovely. Uh, it's funny because at the screenings, like my husband's always really nervous to talk to Christy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he like goes like, to the bathroom and fixes his hair. And you're like, honey, you don't have a chance. <laughs> yeah. You're like, don't worry, like, you don't even have a chance. Oh, enjoy. Enjoy <laughs> your moment. <laughs> she's great. She's great. And Eddie's great. So, um, so uh, the first film I did with Eddie was a, a film called Nice Guy Johnny, and I had auditioned, um, and it was just going to be like a short film. My agent was like, oh, Ed Burns is doing this short film. I think he's just got a fun camera he wants to play around with or something. And I was like, oh, okay. And it was fun. It was to play, it was called Nice Guy Johnny. It was to play Johnny's mom, and uh, it was a couple scenes. And I went in, auditioned, got called back. Eddie was there. Will Rexer, who is his DP on all the films, his best friend, um, he's a great guy, he's shot all of the films I do. Um, and then I got cast, and it was great. And so I went and, well, went to shoot, and while we were there, I was like, you know, Eddie, I met you years ago. 
he's like, what? And I said, when you were doing a movie called She's the One, I don't know if you guys ever saw that. It was like his After about. Brothers McMullen, which was his big first hit, right, that won Sundance. It was mm -hmm. the next film I think he was doing. And uh, and I auditioned for it, and it was that that summer when I was here for like a month and going out on a bunch of auditions. And um, I got called back and met him, and I hadn't seen Brothers McMullen, but my agent was like, he's kind of like the Irish Woody Allen. And I was like, oh, that's cool, and I really liked her. <laughs> the and I Irish met him. Woody Allen. Yeah, they go like the Irish Woody Allen. Um, so I met him, and I, I remember leaving the audition and being like, okay, who is this guy? And I was single, <laughs> so I was like, who is he? He is so cute. Um, anyway, he cast Jennifer Aniston instead of me. Yes, that's right. Okay, <laughs> that's right. So you, so you got beaten by yeah, Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. So I was like, so Eddie, here's what you did. And he laughed, and he's like, well, you know, aren't you glad, Marsha? Because you would have married Brad Pitt. Angelina would have broken up your marriage, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't have minded I'm getting my marriage okay, broken maybe. up by Angelina Jolie. I'm okay with that. If you got if you had a few good years with like. Brad, that would have been okay. Yeah. Right? I would gladly accept a few good that. years yeah. with Brad yeah. for, and then Justin Thoreau like and some, movie, some really handsome. Yeah. 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 yeah, that would be okay. Anyway, so, uh, so I did that film, and we just had a group. I literally only shot one day on that film, and then... Uh, we just had a really nice rapport and chemistry, and and uh, and then he turned it into a feature. And he like the next thing I heard it was at Tribeca Film Festival, and he's like, "Hey, our movie's gonna be here, and we're doing this." Did you say no? No, this was Nice Guy Johnny, nice which guy I thought was gonna be this little short film. Yeah. He like turned it into a feature, and it was the first of those little micro budget. He sort of went back to like the micro budget films. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, a few months later, I get a text. Whenever I get a text from him, it's a good sign, you know, because he's like, hey, you want to do another one? And I'm like, sure. And that's when we did Newlyweds, um, where I play Marsha. Where, where you play Marsha. He didn't even and change I, my name. And I, saw <laughs> that, and, I, and I saw you in that, and I really like your performance in that. Oh, thank I, you. I really do, because I thought that the character that you played in that, who was seen as kind of uptight and a little bit rigid. She's awful. And, and I, I wasn't going to say yeah, that. No, Maybe a little bit. Uh, she seemed very relatable. And not relatable in a way that we're like her, but in a way that like you see that all the time. Like I see that type of thing. The the I'm offended person. She plays in a character that's yeah, just totally. like excuse I'm offended yeah. by what you're saying. And, and that she's yeah. and she's totally offensive. And very yeah. vulnerable. <laughs> and very vulnerable. But there's there's that scene where you guys are sitting there at the table and and your husband's just like it just in the middle of the whole entire just right you are doing like with other people, like, I want a divorce. And right. you're like, great. I'm like, great, good. And I, and I was like, well, and it was a very interesting. It all happened very quickly that suddenly you're getting divorced and then everybody walks out and and Ed Burns' character is just sitting there. It was not my fault. And I, I really loved it. Yeah. It was, it was it's, really great. I love that film. You know, we had so much fun filming it because um, it was originally, I think, written, it was going to be uh, two, it was like two parts put together and and uh, Eddie's Carrie Bechet who plays his sister the wild sister who yeah. comes um, it was gonna link to the other couple the married guy that she's having the affair with mm -hmm. and that was gonna be like the second part of it and so the movie was gonna be these two parts put together and we met that and the first day we shot those two scenes with in the diner there in the restaurant there with Christina with Caitlin Fitzgerald Caitlin, Caitlin, yeah Caitlin, Caitlin. who's amazing um, and Max Baker who played Max the Martian Max and, uh, you really and, nailed uh, the names in this yeah movie. right it was easy to remember who we were does that make it easy on set for you it does but it's, it's a little like, weird when Eddie's like shut up Marsha and I'm oh, like yeah. oh wait oh that one okay <laughs> you know like, um, but. Uh, we had such great chemistry and rapport, and then I think, like, Tribeca, it was his 10th year of Tribeca Film Festival, and they wanted a film from Eddie, and so he just showed them, like, part of this, he showed them, like, those two scenes, and they were like, great, we want the film, it's going to be our big closing night film, finish it, and then, you know, so, so he didn't even have a script, I mean, there wasn't even, there was only, like, 20 pages of a script or something, so we were writing as, he was writing as we would go along, and we would just wow. improv, and drink a lot every time we're drinking in that movie we're drinking for real <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a really low budget film that like it was I heard so people much were, fun people in that restaurant like while we were filming oh, yeah. and other people were just eating like yeah. they were just we didn't close eating. any restaurants didn't down. close anything wow. 
like we would just sit in the corner yeah. and film. And there was a, I think there was a scene that Caitlin said that there was like a working. She was a restaurant tour for mm-hmm. that film, and she said that she was just like we're acting, and a guy came in and was like, "I'll take a Bloody Mary," and she was like, <laughs> "I don't. I'm in the middle of filming." And he's yeah. Like, I just want a Bloody Mary. <laughs> he was like, I don't really care if you're in the middle of filming or not. That's so, New York for you. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, so you guys, but you guys were very low budget, like kept it very true. Yeah. Like people walked in and out of like oh, the yeah. shots and oh, the yeah. set. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that hilarious scene with Dara, who plays the actor, the Irish guy who plays the mm-hmm. like actor with the vacuum cleaner walking around. Like women walking, he's like, hello, hello, ladies. <laughs> like, hello. <laughs> like they're like, <laughs> no, it was really fun, and a lot of it was holed up in. Um, in the Eddie's office space where we were filming and so we it was like summer camp we called it you know it was we just I remember that I got there's a scene there's a scene and it was like midnight and we had started film drinking around I don't know filming seven, drinking filming there's drinking, there's drinking those but terms like, synonymous you know, drinking, drinking, it, was, it was an experimental process it was process like midnight and, yeah. and he's like okay let's try this scene where it's the scene where Kate like gets all mad at him because the sister's horrible and I'm like yeah I don't remember trusted her or whatever and Caitlin's cheeks are bright red because she's had a lot of wine and I'm drinking whiskey and I'm like half out of it you know it's late or whatever and Eddie is filming off camera uh, you know it's a two shot on us and, and then a single on him and, and when I went to loop the scene I, I noticed he looked different I was like wait a minute and he was saying things and I'm like wait a minute and I said, you totally reshot yourself in that scene because you didn't look, because you had, like, red cheeks. And I never knew you were dr- Like, we looked terrible and wasted, mm. and he reshot himself. So he was a So he looked person. good. <laughs> Men. Good old Eddie. Men. No. Cool. no, I adore him. I actually just did another film with him this past summer. Really? Yeah, I got one of those nice texts. <laughs> like, you know. And you had, you had that nice text when you got the Fitzgerald family which with, with Connie Britton. Yeah, Connie. And was his sister was Ed Burton's sister in that movie as well no no there's but, another Burns last name Burns. oh Heather Burns yeah Heather they're Burns not related from Miss Congeniality yeah she's great confusing. she's I'm, great I'm in love with her I've yeah her she's so fantastic so I really um, liked that they're not and related you're, and you're hooking up with the pool boy this is really nice in that film sorry <laughs> Johnny <laughs> sorry, Solo sorry spoilers I love my Johnny Solo <laughs> I'm sorry about <laughs> that um, so you, had, you did that one and then you just did, did another that. one yeah we did another one this summer um and it's called Beneath, what well, working title, I don't know if this is what it's going to be, but it's called Beneath the Blue Suburban Skies. And I play his sister-in-law again. Um, yeah, his real sister, actually, her house has been my house. In Nice Guy Johnny, I played Eddie's sister, and his sister's house was my house. In Fitzgerald Family Christmas, I play his sister, and his sister's house is my house. <laughs> Wait, you own the house? That no, was it's in... his sister, his real sister's house. His sister's sister house. Mary's house. His sister's house. <laughs> <laughs> Where we always film, yeah. And in this latest one, I was playing his sister-in-law, and I was supposed to be, Mary's house was going to be my house, but then we ended up not shooting, like, a couple of those scenes, so. So you are busy. You're pretty well, busy. Well, not that busy. Really? Not that, but I feel like that's something that <laughs> actors say. That's why she's say. filming this show. That's why doing this show. I feel like that's something that actor says. There's, I've just got 50 films going on, and I'm filming a podcast, yeah. and then I'm here with my my husband's company, and we're just <laughs> we're just doing three small plays on the side, and then I and then I raise two children. But it's like I I have some time to walk the dog for 15 yeah. minutes a day. Like I feel like you're just constantly going. So what do you have going on now? Um, really nothing. I promise. Uh, I mean, I finished Eddie's. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I have a film called Crypto that I did last, before, like, May, June. Cryptocurrency. Crypto. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. That. I Crypto missed that. Cryptocurrency. Oh, currency. No. <laughs> I thought you said Crypto Guernsey. Like, That's a good one. Is that something I've never heard of? That's a good movie. But that movie's kind of cool. It's a thriller that Kurt Russell's in. Oh, and, oh, oh. Um, Alexis Bledel and I love her. I'm a huge Gilmore Girls fan, so things go. They're not. I tested for that. Is there ever like Is there Laura like Gilmore? Um, does you have that? You eyes? tested for you tested. Test, yes, yeah, she has the eyes. Yeah. She does have the eyes. You tested for Laura like Gilmore. I did. It was one of the biggest disappointments in my career. 
<laughs> yeah, because I could have been Lorelai Gilmore. It's like, you know, three people testing. And, and I love Lauren Graham. Well, you guys both I'm have glad. gorgeous <laughs> I'm sure, but you would have made a, well, a lovely Lauren. Well, I was paired Lorelai. up with this blonde daughter who looked exactly like me. Mm-hmm. And they fell in love with Alexis, understandably. She's, She's lovely. lovely and sweet. Yeah. She was so young and, and sweet. And so are you, though, so it must have Thank been. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I was like, I remember yeah. the producer, Gavin Pallone, who's a, sort of a friend of mine, um, called me and he's like, Well, we're not sure. And I was like, I can dye my hair dark. And he goes, I know, but I'm not sure what's happening. But they like kept me on hold through the weekend and then they cast me. Is everyone, you ever watching like TV at home with your family and they're like, let's watch this? And I'm like, I can't. I, I, I no, almost Jay, got cast. My daughter it. just started binging Gilmore Girls. And I'm like, this is too depressing for me. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I watched depressing. the pilot and I was like, oh, I can't. I just can't watch it. You can't. It's, it's a, a sad one. If you ever get to it, it is an amazing show. <laughs> she maybe, loves it. Maybe not as amazing as it would be if you were on it. Definitely not as amazing. It. Definitely yeah, right. not as amazing. Yeah, but that you was were. A sad one. But everyone only likes it because they don't know what could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were in my favorite, sh- one of my absolute favorite shows. Gossip Girl. Go Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl. Gossip yeah. Girl. And you were, you were in one of my favorite segments, which is where Serena hooks <laughs> up down. with her teacher. Oh yeah, yeah. And you play, you play uh, his mom, Mrs. Sharp, which mm-hmm. is Ben's. Ben's mother, right. and she hooks up with the teacher. There was this whole thing that's happening, and I loved that whole. But you finally found out who he was, right? Wasn't he like yes, the secret guy in the prison or he something? Was, like you didn't know who he was. Yeah, he for was a actually long time. he was actually like kind of a bad person, right? Not not the best person in the entire world. But you were you were a bit of a snake in that in that, <laughs> and you had you were a bit of a snake. You had some scenes where you were not the nicest person. Well, That's why she wants to play a nun now. She's trying to make up for those play all these bad, bad roles character. Um, yeah, no, I know. It was kind of fun. It was it was nice. You know, you get the job. Originally, it's just like one episode, and then mm. it's always fun when they're like, you're coming back. Yeah. Mm. What was it like working Gossip Girl, even if it was just one show? Like, being around there. Like, it's filmed. It was filmed in it New York It was filmed in New York. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was great. I mean, it was funny. I was doing Newlyweds at the same time, and it was so funny to go from, like, the world of Ed Burns, where you're just improvising and making up, you know, and just free, free, free. And then you go to Gossip Girl, and it's like, um, you said and instead of but. <laughs> you know, it's like, mm-hmm. they're very, very you know, very scripted. scripted. Yeah, very scripted. Um, but it was fantastic. I mean, they're sweet people, those beautiful beautiful young folks on that show. Like Lively. They were lo- with Blake yeah, Lively. she's lovely. Um, uh, Leighton Meester is lovely. You know, they were all really, really sweet. And it was a very well-run ship, that show. And um, I, I do remember like that scene with Serena where I tell her that mm-hmm. I've stolen the affidavit or whatever. I'm gonna. She goes to prison. Right? I send her to prison. Basically, I didn't realize the show was that intense. Yeah. She goes to yeah. Prison. No, what's her name? Serena is Blake Lively, right? Who's Serena. Who's Serena Vanderwood's and Blake Lively. Lily. 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 Lily, Lily yeah. goes to prison, and uh, so. Uh, but I remember this sound guy's wife was in labor while we were shooting that scene in the Empire Hotel, which had a lot of stuff going on. So it was shot in the Empire. Yeah, it was actually shot in the Empire Hotel. That scene was. You were seeing with Kelly Rutherford. Right. Yeah. Who's so great. And can you tell him a fan? Yeah, I always, can. I'm yeah. very impressed. Uh, but the sound guy had to like leave in the middle of the scene because his wife was like Jeez. having a baby. And I had to loop, then I had to loop that entire scene. And I was like, well, he was a little distracted. But it's so hard to loop. Like that really intense scene. And I watch it even now, and it's, it's on my reel. And I'm just like, oh, because I can tell it's looped and everything. No one else can really tell, I don't think. But it's like, uh, but he had a very good excuse. For, like, you know, oh, yeah. That's not like, me. That's like the thing, yeah. <laughs> um, he comes back great. to set, and you're like, don't let this happen again. I know. Well, I never went back again, so it was okay. No, I had a great time. It was great. I loved doing that show. And my daughter, all her friends, like, watch it now. So I, they all get really excited. Like, even the other night, I was upstate. We have a house upstate, and I was at a local basketball game there, high school basketball game that my daughter's friend was playing in. And one of the other girls on the team that I've known forever, because they swam together and stuff. She came over, she's like, I just saw you on Gossip Girl! You know? So I had a lot of cachet with, like, my daughter's 
you know, friends, they think it's cool. Does she want to go into this world as well or not? Um, she is torn. Uh, she actually just, she has the lead in her high school musical this Ooh. year. I love that movie. But so. for a New York, for a New York <laughs> high school, Ooh, she's... Yeah, it's not high school musical, but it oh, is her high school, school musical. New York <laughs> that's, cool. that's, I love those movies. That's pretty great. Uh, yeah, they're doing Sue School, the musical. <laughs> she's playing Gertrude. My high school did Sue School She's well. playing Gertrude McFuzz. That's great. She's very excited. Um, and she's very natural on camera. She did some stuff when she was younger, but I sort of never. She wanted to do it, but I wouldn't. Didn't want to be like the stage mom, and so yeah. I, I just and I don't like the world for kids usually. Mm -hmm. So I was yeah. like, you know what? When you're old enough to do it on your own, and you can get yourself around the city to auditions, go for it. But now she's not sure, and she's kind of interested in medicine as well. So we're kind of pushing the. Go medicine. to school for medicine, yeah. but you can yeah. always do acting. You can, yeah, you can act. She sings really degree. well. She yeah, has a yeah. beautiful yeah. voice. Most actors have a medical degree, so there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah, like Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. Like Doogie. Right. Doogie has yes. medical degree. Yeah. So, in terms of aspiring, uh, you know, up and coming actors, do you have any advice for? I mean, you've done a lot of auditions. You've you've been in a lot of features and, and things like that. Do you have any like w good advice for? people going into that realm that you can impart. Same about yourself right now? Or just like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm asking for a friend. Yeah. Asking for a friend. Um, you know, I, I feel like the industry has changed so much. And I think what you guys are doing here is kind of like, this is the kind of stuff I think that pe people become oh famous <laughs> off of. Oh, we're doing it right now. Yeah. Well, but you do. I mean, people, yeah. be, there's just a whole. A whole other worlds are open to you to sort of promote yourself and get yourself out there. I mean, I, I suck at it, and I wish I was better at it. You know, I'm like, I should I should write a web series and do a web series, and I'm like, I don't know. If you'd like to hire a laptop, to <laughs> Yes, please. Where's my car? Yes, Pat, please, please. Um, so I don't even know how, I mean, my nephew is, is living here in the city. He's 28 now. He went to uh, musical theater college, conservatory in Cincinnati, and... Um, you know, he's here and, and he does voiceovers and he's did his first Broadway play and he's catering and, you know, he's doing a lot of recorded books and stuff like that, but he's just here trying to work and, and he, he did get an agent right out of school and all that. I mean, I guess if you can get a good agent who's behind you or a good manager or someone who's really behind you, I think that's the best help because they have the yeah. ends. But I do think there are so many other ways to do it. I mean. Eddie yeah. with these movies, I think he's inspired so many young filmmakers because you can, you know, we made Newlyweds, not not counting post-production, but in the can for $9,000. Oh, wow. 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 That's it. Yeah. And because we had no crew. I mean, we, we do those movies. Did it yourself. Fitzmas, we had a little more of a crew, but um, yeah, I mean, Will Rexer had a little can in 5D that he shot the whole movie on, and he's a spectacular... DP, so that helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sound, we didn't even have a sound person on, on Newlyweds. Like, we literally had one mic that we would say, Who has the most dialogue? And we'd put it on like this side. Of the, you know, we tape it to this side of the wine bar. And some, That's of, some of the best stuff is, yeah. is made that way by people that are intuitive with, yeah. with their ideas. And I mean, like I that. think he learned on that movie that it's important to have a sound person. <laughs> so we had Greg, like, like the rest other yeah. movies. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of important. It just sound in general. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of important. Um, but but it's it's possible. I think the things are so much more. You know, now that it's you can make these things for uh, tiny tiny budgets, and and you can just kind of go out there and be a skeleton crew. And I mean, we don't we don't have permits or anything. You know, yeah, We're just yeah. shooting. You know, basically, it looks like a tourist mm -hmm. videotaping mm -hmm. something going on or something like that. So when you're doing it that way you don't draw attention to yourself or anything and plus we were sitting in Tribeca where he's like the, I, I call him the mayor of Tribeca you know everybody knows and loves him and he he gives like great establishing shots of the restaurants and stuff like that mm -hmm. and people are like great and we don't have to pay to use the venues or anything like wow. that because wow, that's they're all Eddie's friends he knows the yeah. owners and mm -hmm. stuff like that and they love him and he's he's giving their business reciprocity yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and goes there all the time so yeah 
Well, that was a definite curveball answer. I wasn't expecting that, but yeah. Um, so you're doing it. We are. <laughs> we're, uh, so well, we're, yeah. We started. We started about a year ago, and we're almost finished. We, yeah, uh, <laughs> we're gonna close up shop really quick and, and put yeah. the close sign on the door. Yeah, we're no. about to finish line already. <laughs> we call it the poorly edited podcast for a reason. We have never claimed to do anything well. <laughs> still uh-huh. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Do you edit them? We do. We do. Yeah, 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 actually, exactly. the best part. It's actually Fairly. a lot of editing. That goes in. I've been really good not to swear, right? I don't think I've sworn. No, if you can you swear. Are, actually, you could swear. Yeah. Yeah. Get them all out now. Just like, you can make it I don't know. Now. The, all those people who like Venus won't like me That's if right. I start swearing. So you want us to cut it? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> yeah, cut it if I swear. I don't think <laughs> no, I'm you, you, you can say a bunch more if you want. It's amazing when I went for an hour without swearing. Because usually, we cut it. I don't know how I do it. Yeah, I do too. We are very, we're not very PC as people ourselves. Same. Yeah, we're not. Same. We say some pretty... No, this is yeah. a Mac, actually, that we're this recording is, yeah, on. So. Oh, 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 it's not a PC. Not a PC. <laughs> <laughs> it's very bad. So. We, t- we tell very yeah. bad jokes. That was like, cute. Like, Do you use that one a lot? I think no, so. No, the first time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure we'll get a lot of mileage out of it, though. Yeah, yeah. For now, for sure. <laughs> so I think that's all the time we have. Thank you so much. That was an hour? That was over an hour. That was over an hour. That was so fast. told you We told you that... Yeah, it's, gonna be so fast. it's like a magic famous. trick. She thought it was gonna be like. Now everyone's gonna be like, she is not famous at all. <laughs> she did the. She did over an hour. <laughs> she thought that it was gonna we, be like a cut most of that. Like, oh, I gotta get this everyone. You cut out the Rob Lowe bit. Yeah. <laughs> Could, yeah. Well, thank you so much yeah. for your time. You're welcome. Thank My you for pleasure. Having us here. Thanks it for coming. It was a great place to shoot. A lot of yeah. character here. And, um, if you have anything you'd like to promote we actually, to our audience. I actually saw audience. a little bit of space at the end of the hallway. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we're just going to set up our offices there. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah 212. Yeah. Good. X. Well, there's that round table, right? Yeah, so that's going to be our yeah. Everyone needs lunch there, there, but you could clean out for lunch. That's fine. Right? Yeah. No, I just we'll go somewhere else. Yeah, you could clean out for lunch. Yeah, we'll in the bathroom or something. So this will be our new offices. We'll, we'll just have to change the address in our business cards, but yeah. uh-huh. this is it. Silent Crow. Silent Crows and Lab Chief. Yeah. 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 Put our name. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any papers? Put our name on the door. Like, uh, uh, Do you have anything you'd like to promote or anything? Yeah. You'd like yeah. To, Would you like uh, to say anything? Social media. Uh, yeah. just like follow me on. Life motto you'd like to instill yeah, in people. Yeah. I'm so bad, but I do have an Instagram account there at mdeatlin. Uh, and Twitter, I'm, what am I? M. Dietlin, I think yeah, you would is. know. You know yeah. I'm Twitter so I'm yeah. never on either of them, so you're welcome to follow me. <laughs> <laughs> but don't be offended if I take six months to respond. <laughs> I've actually met some really lovely people via Twitter and a couple yeah. of really, Ed, the Ed Burns people. Mm-hmm. And you've tried. I saw you try to interact with yeah, people. Yeah, I'm and one of them. I feel like the sweet kid Jim are, Mins from uh, Australia. Like he came to New York and. He actually kept saying, Eddie, I'm in Walkers, I'm in Walkers. And it actually came down to like meet him. Wow. Really? Because he was such a big fan. He was here with his wife. But it, it's, you, you do, I think that world, of, like indie filmmakers, they're like young and interesting <coughs> indie filmmakers. And then a lot of zombie fans <laughs> yeah. who are awesome. People, who are awesome and die hard. They are People so die hard. They use social media in, in a great way like that. It's like social media, like back in the day, you didn't have meetups like that. Like one morning you could just, you could just be like, I'm going to be in New York City, I'm going to be in Tribeca today. And then maybe 15 people come and be like, we just happened to see that post. We just came to meet you and have some lunch with you. And that's, I think that's, that's really the really power cool. yeah. of social me- media. Oh, also, yes. Marsha Deedland. Marsha Deedland. At Marsha Deedland on Dietland. Twitter. See, at Marsha Deedland. And, uh, and at M. Deatland. Yeah, you were somebody's woman crush Wednesday, which is pretty. <gasps> I cute. did see I that like six months late, but I was like, thank was, you so much. Yeah, and they tagged all the stuff. That I had to in, Google what, so what WWC <laughs> meant. WCW. <laughs> <laughs> meant. I was like, what does that mean? You're like, this could be good or bad. Yeah. I'm like, insult. world something <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> world, world wrestling. World Wide Web. And then when I saw what it was, I was like, oh, that's so sweet. You were such a sweet person. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much. At Marsha Deatland on Twitter. Yes. At M. Deatland on on Instagram. Instagram. Watch Getting Grace. Watch Newlyweds. Fitzgerald Family. Keep out. Keep a yeah. Keep a lookout for any new and stuff. Crypto coming out. Yeah. Beneath the Blue Suburban Sky. Watch my favorite episode of uh, Gossip Gossip Girl. Girl. Do you know what episode that is? It's season four, right? It's season four. Season four, episode twenty one or twenty two, I think. Oh my gosh, shoot! She she did her homework. Super fan. No, she just watched. She actually watched. That sounds actually kind of right. Yeah. 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 Episode twenty one, I think. 
Yeah, I'm a very I have like a photographic memory with things like, sometimes, yeah. and so I to, I told her that when we had Madeline on the show, Madeline said several times during the show, she's like, "How did you know that?" I was like, "Well, I." Do my homework. I mean, do, my, yeah. I do my homework on people. And then she called the cops, and no, uh, no, I'm not allowed to see Maddie her anymore. Maddie does. If you ever see her, if you ever run into her, she does the most spot on impression of me. Really? It freaks me out. I hear she, she sent me. I wish I had it on my phone. I would show it to you guys, but I, I couldn't find it. I was trying to show. She imitates me perfectly. She has she has this uncanny ability to like imitate. Voices. She just sent you a message. She, she did. Just, she just sent us a message. Actually, we just got a text from Daniel Roback. I love him so much. We just sent him a a selfie and he said how great two Aww. beautiful ladies inside out he said listen to this when you're done with Marsha you'll oh, die laughing oh he said it he sent it oh my god this is it he listen. said it so just listen. listen just listen I just no Maddie honey sweetie no why would he do something like that I don't understand Dan honey honey <laughs> Sweetheart, no, I don't understand why Jaya doesn't like that idea. <laughs> Does, Does your daughter Jaya? Does she so not sound much. exactly I like me? You, Dan, Danny. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> She's a genius. Will you send that to me? Like yeah, to absolutely. Marcia's I'll send that to you. Do you have my number? I don't have your number. Well, we could say it off camera. Yeah, we're, okay. we're, done, <laughs> when we're done filming. Like, like, yeah, and yeah. here's Marcia Deaton's personal <laughs> phone number <laughs> and her I address. I answer that more than Twitter. <laughs> could, you, could you just mind uh, your social security number really quick yeah. for us? <laughs> I'll give that to you um, in just a minute. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been looking yeah. for this. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's uh, really fantastic. Freaky. It's freaky. Yeah. And when I watch her do it, I'm like, wait, I can't wrap my head around this. I, I just have to listen to it. I'm going to have to tag Rob Lowe in the post that we yeah, make about sure. this. I'm going to have to <gasps> tag him about this. I follow him on Twitter. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much. Just kidding. I'm just leaving. Ah. Uh-huh.